Hello, my name is Lameke Lukwesa and welcome to my channel. This is my channel. Okay, good morning and they all welcome to this program of early marriages in rural Zambia. Uh, my name is Lameke Lukwesa and I'm with Mr. Uh, Godfrey Chul. Jeffrey Chul. No, Jeffrey Chul. Okay, thank yes. you very much for that correction. Okay, um, Mr. Chulu, Mr. Chula, we want to look on the on the issue of early marriages in the Roman Zambia. So, why do parents uh, allow their children to go to marriage uh, in early marriages in the Roman Zambia? Thank you to invite me for this program, Mr. Wesa, yeah. and uh, I will give a few contributions. Uh, why parents in rural Zambia uh, force their children to go into air marriages, be girls or boys? Yeah. Let me start with the with girls. The first thing that I have observed is because in rural Zambia, very few parents went to school. And as a result of that, they have not known the importance of education, the importance of sending their children to, to school. Because they didn't go to school, they also want their children now to follow suit. They still live in the colonial system where you find uh, girls are forced into early marriage so that they are given some dowry so that they can also depend on whatever they are going to be paid to receive from the from the the, 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 the door so to say yeah. that is now on the girls part okay. it is they want to enrich themselves okay. you know how you know people used to live in the old it is it is a number of animals that they have to be be paid. So when those animals multiply, the, the, the crow very soon is full to capacity okay. and help other family members. Okay. When they've now uh, data to development into that, the girl has been put into early marriage. Because if they are not careful, the children that are going to be born from that family also will follow suit to the parents. Now, when we come to, to, to boys, those are restricted, restricted to go to further education because they want them to look after those animals that they have as a family and to help them with other family issues. So you find it's a family of illiterate all over here. Okay. Now we're uh, drawing back a little bit back to, to the girl, girl child. We are saying they are forced into early marriages because parents they want to get something uh, on that or which a man is going to pay for that girl. Yeah. Now, there's this issue of um, uh, uh, education for a girl child, and in rural Zambia, we don't see anything happening. So, what is or what can be done to improve this? By, to improve the, the situation, like in, in rural Zambia, like in, in the places where there are and other, other parts of, of, of the country. The government has to come in strongly through radio stations. We are lucky in Maja we have a radio station where people can be sensitized over this subject. It's a serious issue. We don't want illiterate people. We want people who went to school because if one goes to school, then that is now part of development. So we strongly want the government to sensitize the, 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 the community through our radio station. People like uh, councillors, um, uh, headmans in villages, but we are seeing the thing of early marriage is still going on. We find that a child is even uh, the, the girl child doesn't even want to go to school. He said, No, uh, they want no one to you see. It's just kind of the mere want to go in, in, in to a marriage. But find that is a 16 year old girl, and, and when look, even when you go to PhD and look on the test, you find that uh, 
the young girls age 12 to 13, 14, 15 years, those girls are all pregnant. You know, they have a lot of, there's a lot of pregnancy in young girls, and it's a, it's a thing village headmans and chiefs uh, in each part of every uh, community and uh, every district uh, they are not addressing. So how do you look at that? He has brought a very serious issue, Mr. Mason. Very serious. Now, if mentioned of councillors, parents, and chiefs, those people are government, the government figures, the councillor, the chiefs, and the headmen. If the law was strong enough, some of these issues, these challenges that we are facing in the community would be avoided. Now you find, here's a 14-year-old girl gets pregnant. Now, make a trace up. Who has caused that? You find that is somebody maybe over 20 years. Now, because of a, a dull parent would simply demand to be paid, to be compensated if it's compensation, so to say. Instead of taking um, the damage at law, so that he should not repeat. Because if the law is weak, then he will continue doing the same to others. Now, here is a counselor who has been told of what has happened. What does he do? He also gets involved in, 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 in defending the, 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 the offense. You see the point? The, if the, if the, if the counselor is not weak, the parent is not weak, the headman is not weak, these things were going to be minimized. Now the problem is the counselor, you find the counselor is part of what is supposed not to be done. Okay, okay, lastly, on your last words, what, did, what advice would you have to the parents out there who want, you know, uh, who want to, to know where our future of our community and our culture need to be prepared through these young, young children ahead? My appeal is, since we fall under chiefs, senior headmen and the, and the headmen, counselors around, why can't there be some seminars? You call in some seminars in villages, send people to sensitize the members, tell them what is right and what is not right. Then strengthen the law. The law should not be weak. Who, whoever breaks the law, then the law must follow him. Okay. That is going to help us. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Jiro. It's very nice studying to you. And have a lovely day. Thanks. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Welcome to my light office at Ubuntu campus. Uh, sit back and relax as I'm taking you through on what is happening uh, at Ubuntu in terms of electrical. In here is the terminals of all electrical supplies to the uh, Ubuntu campus. Uh, to the Ubuntu campus, uh, this is where um, where the main gears for thermal and hydropower are located. Uh, feeding feeding the buildings, e.g., like stores, office, houses, uh, school mix. A uh, liter, the comp uh, computer, computer school, uh, rendezvous, and the Alpha Airport, including water and power source and power source. Uh, the Malaiti office is is one of the vital departments in the sense that it makes uh, the Ubuntu campus development effective. Effective and easier due to the extens to extensive electrical equipments and uh, appliances used. Uh, I'm going to talk to one of the uh, um, uh, Ubuntu Ubuntu electricians 
who are working in this container on the on this project on this project okay hi how are you thanks very much for your accorded opportunity uh, of talking to you through inquiring of what is happening here at Ubuntu uh, as you very heard and here we are electricians looking on what is happening everywhere in terms of the buildings and uh, electric conditions. All the connections that are happening here are very much in charge there with my colleagues uh, as we work. So uh, electrically we supply water, we supply uh, the buildings, we supply the offices and that on its own makes the people that are working in here feel at home and feel not in uh, not being in the rural but instead as equal as the people that are in town that is 72 kilometers from here they feel the same as being in town at the town center of Macha. Uh, right in here uh, my friend or the, my colleague has already said that we have this office, the Malite office, is a terminus for electrical supply to the buildings. We've got all the gears in here that supply or feed the houses with electrical or rather electricity. Uh, we've got the transfer switch which works together with thermal and uh, hydro. When power goes on, in term, when power goes off, in terms of our national supply, then the automatic switch changes to kick on the gear of the genset and thereafter the supply tends to be normal. Thank you very much for the accorded opportunity once more. You are most welcome Mr. Rupesa for visiting us here. As my colleague has said, Mr. Kaupen Mwemba, my senior electrician in here. We really work hard to make sure that the people in Ubuntu feel home, feel free, as though they are in towns. In terms of electricity here, we use hydro power system. And the, we have got two gensets. When this line goes, goes off, then we keep on the gensets. And we also do maintenance to both water pumps and the houses and we also repair electrical appliances. Thank you so much for visiting us. Welcome to Timata Works. Um, um, this is one of the projects which is in the, in the list of projects to be done in Timata Works, which is Vision Sports. Uh, as you see, uh, this is the uh, Timata Works team, uh, which is called Ubuntu Football Club. This team was, for, was formed last year in November and now currently they are in the uh, first division uh, which is uh, one of the motherboard of football associations in Zambia. Um, uh, so this is one of, uh, of the, uh, one of the things which try to inspire youth through sports and uh, uh, through sport development and recreation in the country. Um, after discussing the issue of early marriages for young girls in rural Zambia, it's important for every parent, every headman, every chief around our village in Macha to work towards that, that we should improve the lives of this young generation to come so that even our community should be uplifted uh, where we are going as the future leaders of this country. Thank you very much for watching this, uh, uh, this interview and this video shooting. For me, it's bye-bye and have a lovely day.